Hello there, and welcome back. Before I start, I want to thank everyone that commented and also subscribed to the channel. Um, it makes me feel very good to know that what I'm doing, these videos are useful and that um, they're interesting to some of you. So please keep doing so. Um, I'm looking forward to knowing more about what you think and the topics you would like to see addressed. And I will happily make more videos um, as I get more feedback. All right, so going back to this video, I want to talk about argument passing uh, in functions and classes and also ownership in C++. And um, I think this is a very interesting and, and important topic because in my experience, knowing about the different ways in which an object can be created, created and owned in C++ and how to pass it to functions and classes and threads um, has been um, has helped me a lot to write code that is not only clean and easy to understand but also very efficient. And furthermore, uh, because it is clean, it means that someone else can read it and also extend it and understand it. So this is why I, I want to spend some time talking about this topic specifically. What I will do is I will talk about these two, sorry, these two first items in this first video, and I will um, delay the treatment of these last three, which are called, um, uh, how, how is it? Um, <laughs> uh, uh, smart pointers of my memory uh, in a later video. Welcome soon, don't worry. All right, so pass by value. This is probably the most intuitive and natural way of passing arguments if you're starting with C and C++ because it's how you would do it typically uh, in almost any other language. And here what we have is a very simple example where there's this function combine that is taking two ints and returning the first int plus, sorry for that, the first int plus two times the second int and that's all it's doing. Um, main in this case is calling combine with uh, one value being three and the other one two. And that's it, no magic here. Now, if we compile this program and we run it, we get what we expect, which is seven as a result, because since v1 is three and v2 is two, it's three plus four because it's two two times two gives us seven. All right, so far so good. Now, what is happening here? How is passing the value working? So what's happening here is that when we do this function call comb combined v1, v2, what it is doing is it's, it's copying the value of v1 into a temporary a that is local to this function. So a is temporary, well, Let's say it's a local variable inside a combine, and the same happens with B. Another way, oh, these notifications are getting a bit annoying today. So um, the, another way to, to see, or to the equivalent way of seeing what is happening is as if when we're doing here combine, the call to combine, what we're doing is something like this. this and we say int a equals v1 in b equals v2 so let me uncomment this so doing this here is the same as if we were inside combine here defining a value a variable a in the stack that will be a copy of v1 and b that will be a copy of v2 and then we return, return the result. And you will see the implications that this has right now. So let me comment this out because we don't need it now. So one question is, what happens here if we modify A? What does it mean? Well, given this snippet here, it means that we're modifying a local variable and V1 is being untouched because V1 is in the color and we just got a copy of it and this copy is local. So if I run this, and I 
the code, you get that v1 and v2 were 3 and 2 as before, and the combination is 8, which is what we expect. And if we were to print the value of v1 and v2 afterwards, we would see that they are the same, because they could not have been changed, by, especially by this a plus equals 1, because what this is changing is a local variable in the stack of combine. And this is how pass by value semantics work. And I added here some more information saying that this is copying into local variables uh, in the stack here, and that this function is the one that is owning these local variables. And this is going to be the link between how we pass variables uh, to and, and values and data to our functions and how ownership works. Because what we did here is that the responsibility of dealing with A and the lifetime of A is local to the function combined. Let's pause that for a second and let's go at why pass by value can be uh, very inconvenient and in a sense of uh, performance very detrimental. So far we were talking about using ints, but what happens if we use larger objects? And for that matter, let's create an std vector of int instead of um, Int and let's create here a std vector int result the same size of a as a and uh, in size perfect and return result good. So far, so good. Here, the Clang format is <laughs> helping me, sort of. I hope it is still clear. And for us to be able to, to call this code, let's do whatever is necessary here. So let's create, create uh, two vectors of size n. And for the purpose of demonstration, let's make them very large. So it's going to be 1 million elements each. And um, let's show here the result of combining v1 and v2, and let's show that there is the first element of that result. Okay, good. So we are ready to go. Now I can, let me move this here, I can compile this and run it, and it's working. It's returning zero, because when I do this, v1 and v2, all the elements, okay, we have n elements in each vector, and because I don't provide any other information, they're being initialized to zero. So therefore, when I do this, I get all zeros. But that's expected. Now, what is interesting to see in this example is because now we're passing std vectors, uh, and because v1, a copy of v1 is being made into A and a copy of v2 into B every time I call this function, we can get a huge performance loss. Um, and I will show you this right now. So suppose that we call this function a hundred times. And let's remove the printf and let's assume that the compiler will not be too smart or will not try to over optimize here. For example, that. So now I can compile and let's time a dot out. And we see that it's taking around 700 milliseconds approximately. Um, and now what I will do is remember that. In this example, because we pass by value, there's a local copy of A and a local copy of B, which is the same as, again, let's just for the sake of clarity, let's uh, do the following. So it will be equivalent to uh, doing std vector, let me, A, A int A equals V1. And the same for v2, and let me let's beautify that. Right. So this is um, okay. This of course doesn't work. Return, but this is exactly the equivalent of um, this function call above. So what is happening is that v1 is copied into a, and v2 is copied into b every time we call this function. Now, 
Here it is when passing by reference or passing a pointer makes sense because v1 and v2, we are not needing them more than to read their values. So there is no need for a copy of them. This is a very useless copy and then time we're wasting. And what we can do is to pass them by reference or pass a pointer to them by simply adding this ampersand here, which is a reference in C++. And by doing so, now it's not going to be all the elements or a copy of the object of v1 that is going to be placed here, but it's going to be its address that we are copying into a variable a. So we reduced the copy, let's say, from a million, uh, actually a million times four because we have int here, so four megabytes per object to eight bytes per object because here we just, we just need an address. So you can see how much more efficient this can be. And let's compile that and time it again. All right, so we went down from 700 milliseconds to 170 milliseconds. Uh, we need to average that out, but that's, that's a big, big difference. We're talking about a more than a four time speed up, around the four time, four time speed up. So you can see how choosing how you pass your parameters, depending on what you need to do with them, can, be, can make a huge, huge difference in your program. Now, let's, let's uh, switch to another file to, so I can put this later in GitLab and use it as a reference so I can put the, the code available in the description of this video. So I'm going to copy this and copy it into pass by reference and I'm going to change here the description as well. So we said that we are going to pass by reference, by reference, and here is pass by reference. And what happ what's happening here, to make the comments correct, is that we um, pass a reference or pointer. And in this regard, talking about ownership now, what is happening is that Combine is not owning um, uh, the data that was passed as local variable. It owns a pointer to the data. So therefore, ownership of the past object, no, basically no, no ownership of past object. So it's as if you were doing a borrow or a share. And this is very important because let me move this above a bit above. So because in this version, which was passed by value, we are entering a scope here and A and B are copies of V1 and V2. And therefore, um, were initialized, well, copy initialized, and by the time we get to this line, they must be destroyed by combine. And this is very convenient in the case, in, this, in the sense that the caller doesn't need to keep, in this case, V1 and V2 alive, they could be destroyed, and it doesn't matter because the function itself has its own copy. So in this sense, it's very safe. And uh, if you think of a threading system, this is a way that you can say, well, I'm going to have a copy, so whoever created the thread doesn't need to keep the data alive. I, I'll, I'll take care of my own of, of keeping the data that I need for as long as I need it. Um, I'm not saying this is a good strategy, but I want to give you an example of, of one possible advantage. In the case of pass by reference, because we are getting a reference to A or a pointer to A and a pointer to B, we need to have some certain conventions or assumptions to make sure that A in this case, or what A points to and what B points to is valid as long as this function needs it, or in this case, as long as it's running. And this calls for, a, for certain conventions when you code. Uh, in my case, it is that when you call a function and you have uh, references or pointers, those references or pointers must be valid as long as that function executes. And the caller cannot simply, because it's using threading, for example, destroy them because you just feel that it's not in it anymore. Um, so this is something to think about. This gets a bit trickier if you think that you surely want to pass references and pointers to, as well to constructors and classes. And in this case, the class might outlive the caller in some way or another. And in this case, you want to make sure that the, the values that you pass to your constructor that will be used at any time in the future, they will remain valid. And this is where you have to, 
how could I say, um, be very clear about how your code is going to be used. And if you're unsure that someone using your code will understand it and know what to do correctly, then uh, write comments because otherwise <laughs> you might have some annoying segmentation faults in places that you don't expect and it's, can be, it can be very difficult to debug. All right, um, I will leave it here and in the next video we'll talk about smart pointers. Thanks for watching and see you soon.